Hey, what's up, Turtle Riders? Give me one sec. Mic check. Uh, audio. All right, what's happening, people? Oh, what the hell's going on over here? Let's get this green screen fixed. There we go. Nice and neat. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to the Turtle Boy live show. I am your host, Uncle Turtle Boy. I apologize about the delay. Just assembling some of the shit you're going to see tonight. It's pretty crazy. But uh, I, I went ahead and I shared the link to this stream on the various social media pages, guys. Clarence Woods Emerson on Facebook has like 25,600 followers. Turtle Boy Sports has 17,600 followers. And the Uncle Turtle Boy page has about 18,400 followers. You need to go ahead and like all those, please, or you're dead to me. Uh, let's Actually, I want to see you get to 20,000 first. The Turtle Boy Sports page of the Uncle Turtle Boy. It's close. But Clarence has more than them all. I've also shared it on Twitter. Get at me on Twitter. They'll let me stay on there for now. We'll see how long it lasts. At Dr. Turtle Boy has 8,500 followers. And at Turtle Boy Phone has about 36, 3,700. So follow them all. I'm all over social media. I won't be silenced. I refuse to be. Also, most importantly, since you're on YouTube right now, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Uh, let people know that uh, we are you know, uh, live. Let people know we're out here. Join the party. And... Uh, you know, hit that notification bell so that you guys get uh, the content you deserve every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night at 9 p.m. Okie dokie. So without further ado, um, so what I'm going to talk about tonight, I was supposed to have a guest on. I was supposed to have a guest on. However, uh, she has bailed, uh, as we're going to see, because uh, she is fucking insane, absolutely insane, and she's obviously a moron too. Uh, considering that she banged Michael Giannetti, which is never a good idea to begin with. Uh, I would question your judgment immediately if you do something like that. So uh, let me just hold on one sec. And also I'm looking for a producer. I was supposed to have a producer tonight. I talked with the guy yesterday. I didn't hear from him today. I was going to text him, but I'm like, you know what? I want him to text me. I don't want them. So uh, I got another guy that wants to try out for the producer on Thursday night. Uh, so he's got, we're gonna have another guy go Thursday and then I got another guy lined up for the next Tuesday, but I'm always looking for new producers. And basically what you'd be doing is you'd be like the guy, like if you ever watch my show with Jerry, you'd take the role that Colin and used to do that. Um, Karana does now you'd, you know, kind of be playing quarterback facilitating conversation. Obviously it's my show, but I would have someone to bounce idea, you know, talk about. And if I were like, you know, like, let's pull up this tape. Let's do this. That would be you in the background doing that. So if you're interested in that, and honestly, uh, you know, I don't care the gender, but I kind of think it sounds good with a chick. Like, I'm going to be perfect. I mean, I'll give a guy a shot too. I will. But I've been listening to the Brett's After Party. I went, I watched Brett's After Party on uh, Saturday night after our show, and I couldn't stop watching. It was too good. And Amanda does a great job as the producer for that. So I'm not trying to poach her from Brett. That's Brett's producer. But I want, like, Brett has a better producer than me somehow. How the fuck did that happen? Uh, so, the, it, the, like, the, the spinoff show has better production than the show itself. So that we, we got to fix that. We got to fix that. So basically what I'd be looking for is somebody that can, like, the, the behind-the-scenes stuff is easy. It takes two seconds for me to show you how that works. But I'm also looking for someone to converse with just have conversations with talk about this stuff instead of just me talking the whole time obviously i would do most of the talking but you'd chime in like 20 percent of the time probably and you got to know turtle boy you got to know the topics you got to know the history like if i like you can't i don't want to discriminate against the new people but if i want to ref like david owen is awesome in that role david like i love having david on because david's like the turtle boy historian he knows everything about the past, even before he started reading Turtle Boy. Like he went up and read up on it. So he knows if I mention a blog from like 2015, he knows who I'm talking about, even though I haven't mentioned that person since then. So yeah. Okay. No, no, I have a lot of help. Uh, I have a lot of help. I don't know if the people want to be named who they're helping. They do a lot of stuff. But as far as like, like I don't do like this whole YouTube shit, like all those graphics, I don't make any of those. I don't know how to do that. The TikTok, I don't know how to fucking do that. The Instagram when it was up, that's not me. That at Turtle Boy Tweets account, that's not me. So, um, yeah, I, I promise I'm not going to poach Amanda. And no, no masks required. Not only masks not required, 
Uh, they're not allowed. Thank you, Brian Looney. He sent me, um, he says, $25 for the nice job exposing the mask Nazis this week. Thank you. He sent that on Cash App. If you guys want to support the program, that reminds me, there's a dollar sign on the bottom there. That's for something called the Super Chat. If you hit that button, you can donate whatever amount of money you want. And it comes up on like a billboard and you can write whatever message you want. Give a shout out to your boy, your dog, your homie, maybe call out your baby mama. Maybe, you know, maybe somebody groomed your teenage daughter and, uh, you know, maybe some, you were dating somebody who groomed your teenage daughter uh, and then started feeding her drugs and then began sleeping with her when she was 16, uh, prompting you to move to Florida to be with another junkie who you consider to be a step above him, but really isn't. Maybe something like that happened and you want to call them out. I don't know. So that's what happens. Um, that's a super chat. If you have cash up, I'm dollar sign Uncle Turtle Boy. We can do it that way. Okay. Okie dokie. So here's the deal. The person that I was going to have on the program tonight, let's see if I can find a picture of her. Uh, her name is uh, Courtney Amoroso. Hold on. I got pictures of her. Yeah, she blocked me, so I can't pull up the pictures anymore, unfortunately. Hold on one sec. I got them here somewhere. When, when was I talking to her? I was talking to her last night, so I saved these images. Is this, what's this one? Nope. Hold on. This is why I need the producer. I'll get it. Give me one minute. Yesterday at, um, what's this one? No, that's Janetti. I don't need that one. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, I thought I had it. It's on there somewhere. One sec. I promise. Talk amongst yourself. Brett, tell a funny joke. Today at 10. And by the way, you guys see Cam Newton today? Goodbye. That's what happens when you don't get COVID tested. Hold on. I'm getting a message here. Somebody's probably sending to you. My producer behind the scenes. Yes, I'm getting one behind the scenes. Okay, here we go. Thank you very much. Let's pull these images up. All right. Okie dokie. Share. Oh, thank you very much, Tommy. There you go. See, that's the super chat. You can do what Tommy did, leave a blank, or you can write something, whatever you want to do on there. It's your super chat. Share screen. Okay. So this is uh, the woman that you see there on the left. Her name is Courtney. Uh, I don't know what her old name was, but she goes by Amoroso now. And the girl on the right is her teenage daughter. Uh, that would be Caitlin Schmoka, uh, also known as Mike Gennetti's baby mama. Uh, the crackhead who he basically groomed and, and got addicted to drugs. So I never talked to Courtney before because Courtney is married or, or yeah, I guess she's married to, I don't know if it's ghetto married or real married or whatever. But she is married to a real winner uh, by the name of Joe Amoroso. Okay. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate that. Uh, so let me pull up some Joe Amoroso blogs here so you know exactly Joe Amoroso Turtle Boy Sports. Let's see what comes up here. Stop. Let's see. Hide. Okay. Share screen. And okay. We got don't in memory of Danny Donna Bennett, my sister in law in all but blood. Yes, thank you, Donna. Thank you for your service. Appreciate it. RIP. Um, so this is uh, let's pull this douchebag up. So you remember back in 2015, the Bella Bond story? This douchebag, Bella Bond was the uh girl that washed up on the sh she she was like uh, she was almost three. And they didn't know who she was. She she washed up in Winthrop. Her body did in 2015. Nobody knew who this girl was. Turns out that she was murdered by a crackhead uh, in the mother. The mother didn't murder her, but the mother obviously allowed this to happen, this abuse, because she's a drug addict too. And this guy that she was dating, this crackhead, who thought she was possessed by demons, so he killed her. Uh, and he's in prison for the rest of his life, etc. Well, out of nowhere... This dude starts showing up named Joe Amoroso. And all of a sudden, he's like right on cue. Bella Bond's dad, grandma, all of a sudden care now that the cameras are rolling. And they're just like this. The girl was almost three. 
and this guy shows up out of nowhere, right? And he's just like, you know, oh, I'm so mad. I want justice for my daughter. And he'd been living in Florida, even though he's from Boston. Like, look, at, you see this spread here on the, the cover of the Boston Globe? I was so pissed about this. This was my take back then. Like, I was so upset that the Globe was turning this guy into, like, this loving dad and shit. He renamed Bella Bond, Bella Amoroso, for the public funeral. Like, he, he actually did. He never met this girl. Never paid a dime in child support. And most importantly, didn't protect her like as a father. And that's what upsets me the most. My daughter, I think, was born around this time. Like she was born in May of 2015. So like I was looking at this as like a dad too, that I would just, I, could, I can't comprehend what that's like to just intentionally not see your kid. I can't ever reach that state. Like you have, it gets hard for me to be, you know, gone from them for like a day. Meanwhile, this guy never met her and she died because her daddy was not there to protect her from the monsters. And then he starts a GoFundMe and it was a minute and it was a scam, by the way. And off, after that, he was complaining about Turtle Boy, etc. And then he started making hats and blaming DCF. And here he is on the at the fucking funeral, putting on a whole thing. He never fucking met her. Well. Then he gets arrested. Then Joey Amoroso got arrested because that's what uh, crackheads do. And you got to let me see if I can pull this up. This story. Let's see this. Hold on. Okay. There's one. And then let's pull this one over here. Okay. There we go. Let me pull this up. Thank you, Heather. Heather sent $10 on the cash app. No message included, but that's okay. Thank you very much, Heather. Appreciate that. I don't know. Do we get any, Let's see. All right. So let me stop this screen. Share this one. Oh, no. That's from the fucking trial. There's like he actually spoke at the trial and was like pulling all this shit. I want this one, actually. I want... Come on, producer. This is your job. Let's see. I want this one. All right. So let me read this. This was like uh, right around that time. This warrant issued for the arrest of Joe Amoroso, who claims to be the father of him. Joe Amoroso, who claims to be the father of Bella Bond, the toddler killed last year, failed to appear in court on Tuesday, and a warrant has been issued for his arrest. Nice. He was initially arrested and accused of larceny for stealing purses from Duong's Quality Nails and Spa in Revere, Connolly's office said. He's on probation and he had earlier pled guilty to a separate larceny charge. In December, he was arrested after being accused of leaving a Home Depot without paying for a bandsaw, fingerless gloves, and a Bluetooth headset. Prosecutors have charged Rochelle Bond as an accessory to the fact and blow, both have pled not guilty. But you got to see the con. I got another one here. Oh, here's the one I want. Here, this is the one I want. This is like, you got to see this fucking comment to realize what a fucking piece of shit he actually is. Let me pull up this one. Stop. Share screen. And go with this one. Okay. So he skips court. So this was in June of 2016. The father of Bella Bond failed to show up at court. Uh, he was arrested uh, Friday for larceny charges in Revere. Um, he was the father of the two-year-old girl, blah, 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 or at least he claimed to be. This is not the first time he's been arrested since learning of his daughter's death. In December, he was also charged with larceny over 250 for shoplifting. There was one quote in here. I swear to God. There was a quote where he's like, do you know who I am? Hold on. There's a great quote. I'll just pull, you know what? I'll pull it up. Turtle Boy's got it. Turtle Voice Sports, Joe Amoroso. He was robbed. I can't believe he said it. he was robbed of a chance to be Bella Bond's dad. Like he he had three years to be your fucking dad and he didn't do it. Uh, and he made Ratchet Madness in the first round. I forget how far he made it. He made it to like the Sweet 16. He was in our first annual Ratchet Madness. Uh, let's see. 
I believe he was quoted in here as saying, man. Oh, this is what he actually said. Here it goes. He goes, um, police said they also found uh, Joe Amoroso, Bella Bond's father, was arrested around 1.30 at the South Bay Mall. That was the, Wasn't that the mall that Rachel Rollins says she doesn't go to because of all the crackheads? So he's at the, uh, <laughs> of course he's there. She doesn't go there because Joey Amoroso's there. That explains it now. Now I understand where she's coming from. No wonder she wanted to get the hell out of there. He was arrested at the South Bay Mall after being accused of trying to walk out of a Home Depot with $600 worth of products he didn't pay for. He allegedly tried to take gloves, safety glasses, and a, a fuel bandsaw. Police said they have found hypodermic needles in his pockets. So he's using. Police said that when he was arrested, Amoroso allegedly told officers, now you can tell everyone that you locked up Bella Bond's dad. This is, I mean, he really thinks he's like some fucking, so I'm Bella Bond's dad. Yeah, you could tell everybody, bra he's bragging about it, bragging about it. So yeah, fuck her. Anyway, so Courtney Amoroso is his ex-girlfriend. Right, they're around. I think he's like a year older than her, Janetti. And obviously, if you're Mike Janetti's ex girlfriend, something's not wrong. Like something's wrong with you. Obviously, like no, no normal girl. No offense to the Janetti people that you know watch the show, but you probably know it too. You're probably a little fucked up. Like, let's be honest. Come on, come on. If you ever found yourself like in a place in life where you're like, you know what? My guy, the guy I want to be with, my man is Michael Gianetti, also known as GSD, also known as the Hyde Park Meth Mongoose. I like him. He's my guy. He can't speak English. Uh, he kills, you know, most women he dates uh, that drive from drug overdoses in his arms. But you know what? That's the guy I want to hitch my wagon to. So she decides that she's going to settle down with him. Now, they didn't, I don't believe they had any kids, but because Caitlin was already born at this time. And there's a lot of pictures of them when they're younger. So I'm getting all these messages in my inbox. Holy shit. Okay. I'm getting, so here we go. Here's some good ones. I had fucking, I thought I had these. Holy shit. What are all these messages? People at Joe Amoroso. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting, hold on. I'm going to pull them all. Up. I'm going to pull them all up. I'm downloading all these fucking pictures out as they come in. Go this way. My little princess, Jesus. He was posting pictures of Bella Bond when she was alive. Oh my God, we got to look at these. This is fucked up. I haven't even seen some of these. This is fucking... How, how have I not seen some of these? Oh my God, looking for... Okay, this guy is fucking sick. Absolutely fucking sick. Good Lord. Hold on, let me pull these all up. Where do you see some of these? Thank you, Blarney. And by the way, yes, this is uh, Caitlin's uh, who wouldn't pay to be number 401 on his sex list. Uh, she was born in 1995, which is normal. So here's Joe Amoroso. This is well after the girl died and after he's been charged twice with shoplifting in Boston. Looking for answers at Deer Island. Fucking narcissist. Here's another one. This picture of the girl. Uh, she was still alive at this point and he could have seen her and chose not to. Here's another one. My little chef starting to toss pizzas. Love it. This is 2014. Okay. Gosh, my daughter is adorable. Praise the Lord. Yeah, except you haven't bothered to go see her. My little princess styling and profiling. It's an oh, here's one I haven't seen. Here's Joe Amoroso feeling blessed with Caitlin Schumacher. This is a schmoke or whatever. This is Janetti's baby mama. I love both my wife and stepdaughter very much. God is always good and he is love. So this was after Bella Bond was dead uh, and, and he knew about it. So he was up here, you know, getting attention and stuff like that. Or was the, oh, this was the same day. This is the same day. He's posting missing Bella 
Only if BCF never closed the open investigation, then Bella would have been safe and raised very well by this beautiful family right here. So just for the social record, I have a beautiful God-given family, and so did Bella. No, you don't. You were, you're not a dad, okay? If you've never met her, then you're not a dad. I don't blame myself. I blame DCF for most of it. I don't blame myself. How have I not seen this? Well, you should blame yourself. You should absolutely blame yourself. I blame DCF. I don't. You shouldn't need DCF. Uh, yes, obviously DCF fucked this up. No doubt about it. If you've come to the point where you're relying on DCF to keep your daughter safe, then you have failed as a father, period. Period. So what, do you say, what else did he say on that? He said, uh, I blame DCF mainly her mother, Rachel, should have protected her. Yeah, well, you know what? Rachel was a, a junkie, um, a filthy junkie. Obviously, she could not be entrusted to protect your daughter. You should have known that. But, oh, yeah, you conceived this girl in a tent at Occupy Wall Street. And there they are. Okay. I mean, talk about worlds colliding here. So there's Amoroso and her whatever. So she would not come on tonight because like she will, she wants to roast Janetti. She fucking hates Janetti and wants to come on and tell all about Janetti. Cause let me show you the first messages that I have here about this douchebag. So you can see some of the things that uh, she was saying. I got a whole video here. Let's, let's play the video. Because she's like, I'm not coming on your show. I'm not giving you any content. I'm like, bitch, I got plenty without you. You know, basically her condition for coming on was I have to get along with Joey Amoroso. He has to come on too. I'm like, absolutely fucking lutely not under any, con like you have to like say, sorry. I'm like, oh, fuck no. He's worse than Janetti. Like Janetti is really bad, but we all kind of know Janetti's a piece of shit. Like he's a murderer, like he kills women and he sells drugs and he's a crackhead and all this stuff. We, we get all that, right? That Those are all bad things. And, but he doesn't like, at least we know like DCF does not allow him near the kid. <laughs> and we know he's a horrible father. Everybody knows that this guy fooled the Boston Globe and got them to think that he was like some sort of legitimate loving dad. Okay. So let's play this. Like, I, no, I will not do that. Yeah, like, I ain't fucking, like, no fucking way. I don't care how much time has passed. I hate Joe Amoroso more than any person I've ever blogged about. I truly hate him. Very rarely do I hate the people I blog about. I don't hate Mike Gennetti. I don't hate, like, I mean, you name, I mean, I guess I hate Gaffney. I really hate Gaffney. I hate Gay Peter. Hater. Uh, there's probably only like five people I hate, but he is one of them. I hate Joe Amoroso. I hate him. So I'm not getting along with him. Fuck that. Anyway, so let's, here's a message that uh, one of our people had uh, with uh, Miss Courtney in here, okay? The, uh, Bender Rover kind of brings people together here. So he's like, hi, Diane. Again, I am not Diane, but she thinks Diane works for me. So Courtney, we're all here to help. That's fucked up that Mike strolled into the court as expected to get his drugs back. Uh, I want him away from Caitlin, Diane says, and that baby. And then she the, like, there's a whole group. Um, he's a danger to the baby, blah, blah, blah. Have you listened to any of his shit lately? And she's like, I stayed off Facebook because when I see it, I go crazy and end up doing something stupid. And I'm the one who gets blamed. And in the end for being the crazy psycho that hero, Mike had to protect Caitlin from. Okay. Um, let's see. So she goes on to say, but anyone who is a mother or father or parent should know when it comes to your child, you can become the Hulk and do damage. So I have to stay away from it all. And then it makes me look like I don't care, but that is so far from the truth. Anyone who knows me knows I am not a dead beat, but I got needles and drugs planted on me. Okay. Stop right there. I don't, I don't believe that at all. You don't get, first of all, you're hanging out with Mike Gennetti. Okay. Sober women don't do that. Sober women do not date Mike Gennetti. That's not a thing. Sober, like you have to be a crackhead to date Mike Gennetti. That's a rule. So I don't believe anything was planted on you. I think you were doing drugs and you got caught. That's what I think happened. Okay. Um, so anybody who knows me, no, I'm not a deadbeat. 
Yeah, you just I mean if I know two guys you fucked. I know two guys you fucked. Joey Amoroso and Mike Janetti. I don't really need to know that much more about you. Okay. That's that's it. So he says, I'm not dead, but I got needles and drugs planted on me. Uh, and cops called on me for hitting Caitlin when the bruises were from Mike. But that got turned on me. So he looks like the hero. It's insane. I believe that. I actually believe that Mike hit her and blamed her because he's a fuck. As we've seen from Mike, he's a pathological liar. Okay. Oh, the beating me in front of her and his dad happened a few years ago. Um, and then she says, but during Christmas time of 2007, we had a four hour long fist fight. That's a long fist fight. I had two black eyes and bruises everywhere, broken ribs. You name it. I had one bruise that went from the back of my right ear all the way down my body to my ankle. And I got blamed because I should have stopped hitting them and back and my beating would have been over a lot quicker. So that's, so he's a terrible monster. This doesn't surprise me at all. So keep in mind, it's tough to know who's telling the truth here because she won't come on because Joey Amorosa is not allowed on. So she's not coming on. Uh, but I part of, I believe a lot of shit, but I don't believe she's not into drugs. I don't believe that. So she was 12. Caitlin was 12 when all this was happening. So he's banging mom, you know, beating the shit out of her. Meanwhile, he's looking at this 12 year old and be like, hmm like to tap that in a couple of years. Like who that's insane. Like what kind of monster does something like that? So, you know, he's a huge rat too. Uh, so she saw it. She saw it me after fight and wanted to kill him. I did put him in jail, but the cops didn't seem to really care. That happened in Chelsea. I should have ki just killed him back then. I probably would have gone to jail for life, but then Caitlin would have been safe. Fuck my life. It's her life I'm worried about. So she does. She has posted as of like a couple years ago, pictures of her and Caitlin, but they don't talk anymore. Mike doesn't let her talk to her and shit because he's a, a psychopath. And she's a 25 year old grown woman now. Like there's nothing you can do um, about that. But she goes on to say, let's see. Next thing. Okay. Um, from killing him. Yeah. And that's another reason I have to stay away because I don't know myself what I'm capable of doing to him. And then Caitlin gets involved sticking up for him and I end up with the burns. He needs to be dead or in jail, blah, blah, blah. We lived in Weymouth and the apartment building could hear them screaming and yelling at me to leave all the time. The cops were called like every other day. The cops even told me that I should have pressed charges on her. Cause she would put her hands on me too. And I would fight back or defend myself. Cause I could never hurt her. It wasn't her. It was him. So she's getting, and we've seen how the daughter Caitlin gets in court comes to Mike's defense. Like she defends him. I mean, she's, she's, I guarantee she's an abused and battered woman. She's probably hooked on drugs. Janetti has this He's evil. He has this way with just, I mean, he's confessed to raping women. He's a monster. He's an absolute, fucking monster drain on society and the worst part about Janetti is he's such a cunt he's just such a little bitch he's a snitch ass hoe he goes to the cops he's a rat there's a reason he's always staying out of jail and then he runs to the fucking police and cries like the bitch that he is like let me show you this the first video we ever saw of him let me pull it up. TV Daily News. Mike Gianetti. The first video we ever saw of him, like getting in that situation in Jamaica Plain on his way to court in that baggy uh, Doc Rivers suit there. Okay. Let me, let me pull it up here. We got to watch this video because the ending kind of shows up kind of sums up what this guy is all about what a fucking pussy he is look at this tube oh my god like, i mean he's fun like, he's funny to laugh at. like he is amusing he doesn't know it but like joey amoroso is not amusing he's amusing like, he's he's funny like let's be honest like the whole concept of mike Janetti is in, in and of itself funny like we all got a good laugh out of it okay but he's also a monster. So let's, let's not forget that either. Um, so th check. This was the video the first time we ever met Janetti. 
and he was crying about my arm, my arm, my arm, because he got detained for five minutes. And then he goes and cries. Like he tries to get mass accountability. He was just this cop block loser to like dock. And, and keep in mind, this guy's looking for reasons to shit on the police. Cause that's what cop block douchebags do. And so he's like, okay, this guy will do Mike Gennetti. This guy, he says he's been abused. Let's, uh, let's make him the face of police brutality. Like let's I'll hitch my fucking, you know, wagon to this guy's train. You already talked to him. I changed the audio. It was you. Did you put me in the car? Who did? Who put me in the car on the left side? Sir. You were filming. I know. I, I walked up a little late, but. This is why. Sir. I love you, police. My family's police. Watch this. Because I don't want you guys to fucking hit me no more. <laughs> That's the part. All right, this guy's a fucking drama queen, bro. <laughs> Watch this. I don't want you guys to hit me no more. I don't want you guys to fucking hit me no more. All right, this guy's a fucking drama queen, bro. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. He's, he's a drama queen. And that's what pisses me off. Look at him running away. That's what pisses me off about him. It's just like. Okay, you're not even like like you're obviously a joke. You're a fucking asshole. Like you kill women and shit, but then you run down to the courthouse like a bitch and complain that you are like threatened and shit. Like you know, oh, turtle boy's being so mean to me. He's sending the guys down and put a knife in my throat. ISIS style videos and this and that. And oh my god, the cops put him. Oh my god, don't hurt me no more. Like shut up, Janetti. Like, you're such a fucking pussy. Anyway, and then he'll make a video. Oh, I'm going to kill you, motherfucker, blog that. Anyway, back to this. Back to this. Because this is, keep that in mind, that this is the real person we're dealing with here. So uh, he puts hands on these women's a lot. I wouldn't fight back and whatever. She called my mom like a week or so before Emmy mom passed and told my mom she wanted out, but she couldn't leave. I believe that. My mom had a heart disease. In her whole body, she was very fragile. Uh, nothing she could do either. It was awful. And yes, that is why I went to Florida a few years back. Because I had to get away before we all ended up dead. With Joe Amoroso. Come on. That was my worst fear. When I would fight with him about it, she would stick up for him and come after me. I do believe that because of the way she acted in court. Uh, she would do anything he told her to do. I was legit afraid I was going to get murdered there for a while. I was afraid to sleep most of the time. It was a tragedy. I went there to pick her up and ended up getting blown off after sitting there for like three or four hours, waiting for her to get home. I had to leave. She wasn't coming back to the left anyway. Uh, they would take the trash out and be gone for a long time, like an hour or two. So this is when she was uh, underage, okay? And he was dating her. So this is when Courtney was dating Mike. And, you know, Caitlin was like 15 or something. Like, no, not even. Like 13 or 14. Okay. This is what he write. This is what she said. They would take the trash out and be gone for a long time. Like an hour or two. I would go and look for them without telling me. I looked. I would catch them in lies. They would say, oh, we were right out there on the steps or whatever. And I would call them out on it and it would turn into World War III with blood and police. It was bad. I tried so hard, but I wasn't good enough to get him out. I failed her. Uh, he would never admit it. So he's been probably hooking up with her since she was like 12 or 13 years old. Probably. Okay. Getting her hooked on drugs. And he literally recruited her from the mother. The mother was getting too old. And so he's like, I need a new girl. And maybe she's getting too independent. So he's like, I need, I'll just, I'll, I'll turn her daughter into a crackhead. That's what I'll do I to her mom. I'll do it to the daughter. I would question them and the way he would word things made me sound like a paranoid, jealous monster. 
He was very good at turning things around on me. She's not much. She's still a baby and her son loves her so much. Fuck that. Get that baby out of there. And I think I had the picture she's ever posted. Have you ever noticed the look on his face when he sees his mama? It's priceless. Then he looks at Mike and gives him dirty looks. I don't know about that. And just so you guys know, whenever Mike is rapping, he is high as a kite. He only raps when he is high. Well, yeah, we could have figured that one out. Uh, he's a scared little bitch and wouldn't rap a song to save his own life. Nice. My sister Shelby used to be the best friends with Mike's cousin, Annette Gianetti. I was also best friends with her in high school and well into my 20s. Annette's father is brothers with Mike's dad. Her and I spoke about all this when the baby was born. She is a good person. Her sister and her two brothers are great people. One brother is a Boston cop and the other is an EMT. All four of them wanted to take the baby, but they didn't end up doing it because they all know that Mike would torture the shit out of them and God only knows what else to kidnap the baby or something. They all wanted to watch Caitlin grow up when she was an infant and they are so disgusted with Mike, but they also know and have witnessed his wrath. Right. But they all have kids on their own. They have to protect first and foremost. That's why they ultimately didn't try to take the baby at the beginning because God only knows what Mike would have done to their kids if they had tried. That's why my family didn't step in either. I think I'm the only one who ever stood up to him and I'm not trying, but blah, blah, blah. I've always thought it was revenge for me not being the good little girl. Um, what does this one say right here about sleeping with my angel? He tried getting with me like two or three years ago. Ooh, trying to take Amorosa's girl. I was like, you are a sick fucking joke. I would see myself up and never have sex again before I sleep with you after you ruined my precious angel. And now I want to go find him. So there's that. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see. This is the best thing I've ever seen. You guys rock. The address is actually 225 Georgetown Drive. I hope people don't end up at 221 door trying to bang our cracker break in. Oops, I watched some of the videos on Facebook. That girl's voice in the background is Caitlin, and she wouldn't be without the baby. So the sweet little boy is in the car and around him while he was acting like that. And by the way, I also found out from my sauces that Janetti on August 26th got involved in another hit and run. He was involved in yet another hit and run. He has no license. He just drives around and does whatever. Like in the Boston police just don't seem to care. Maybe they have bigger problems. I don't know. Maybe they're just disillusioned with constantly arresting people, sending them off to court and having Rachel Rollins drop the charges. That is a thing. I don't know. But it just it bothers me that this guy, the, the law just does not seem to apply to Michael Giannetti at all. So that girl's voice in the background is Caitlin, blah, blah, blah. It's all, how has he not been taken away from them? It's all because of Caitlin. Caitlin is a good mom. No, she's not. So she wants to defend her daughter, but she needs to realize that part of being a good mom is protecting him from the maniac. Yeah, you should talk, okay? You should talk. I should have known that with her, but he didn't act like that around her. You just said he went like missing for hours. Like they're obviously boning. Obviously someone was up there. I know it doesn't look or sound like it, but I was very strict when it came to my daughter. No, it doesn't. Well, she was growing up. I didn't even drink alcohol when she was little or let anyone else around her who did. The boyfriend I had at that time when we were around 19 or 20 years old drank here and there with his friends, but I even told him that I can't be with you if you're going to blah, blah, blah. He quit drinking. It uh, wasn't true. Like when she was pregnant with the baby, I'm not sure if you saw those pictures she posted of her belly. But she looked like Bella Swan from the Twilight movie. I don't get it. She was clearly still using when she was pregnant, and she knew better. Great. So that baby was obviously born addicted to drugs. She was 24 years old. She should have been punished for that, like done some jail time or something, I believe. That is murder to me. I hope she knows how lucky she is. He is such a good uh, baby. I mean, she's got to get – that baby should be out of the house, Okay. He is just like her when she was that age. I want to meet him so bad. And yes, I've stayed away on purpose because it's very difficult for me to give a blah. My husband and I call him baby Amoroso. I cannot bring myself to call my grandson by that name. Not yet anyway. I know it's not his fault who his father is. 
and I would take him in a second if I could. I don't think he's any safer around you, but that poor sweet boy, I did message her on Friday and told her I loved and missed her and would love to see them, but I don't think Mike will ever let that happen. Okay. They should be putting him before themselves, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anything else useful here? Okay. So that's the end of that. So that's that conversation. So I see part of this. That's Aiden Jr. out there. I want to save Aiden Jr. Uh, my favorite transgender son or daughter, whatever, non-binary, whatever they decide they are. I see that and I'm like, I got to get this chick on the show, obviously. So I message her and let's look at our conversation. And thing, things kind of went south quickly. I thought it had potential. But it didn't. Let me pull this up. Is this the right thing? Okay. So, I'll, okay, let's pull this up. Share screen. Okay. So this, I'm asking her, I'm like, are you coming on the show? She's like, I have to discuss it with Joey first. Ugh. When you originally messaged, I just thought you were going to ask me a few questions about Mike, thinking you wanted to know the truth. That's all it I wanted, and I have no problem telling you or anyone else for that matter, anything and everything that happened because I have nothing to hide, even though I do ultimately at the end of the day, blame myself for not seeing it and preventing and protecting my daughter, which by the way, you should know that both Joey and I went to DCF begging them. This is the part that pissed me off. Joey and I went to DCF begging them for help with Bella four different times. So we tried to prevent anything from happening there. And no one listen. Why are you going to DCF? Get on a fucking bus. Go to Boston and go see your fucking kid. It ain't that fucking hard. Bella Bond is a crackhead. She's not going to fight you for custody. Go see your fucking kid. Yeah, I mean, these centigraphs are barely any better. But she plays it off like she's like, you know, a loving mother. It's like, no, you date Joe. And so I read this and I'm like, okay. She's already making excuses for Amoroso. We're off to a bad start. And blaming DCF. So that was twice I asked DCF to get involved in my life to help get these sick predators away from my girls and the state wouldn't do jack shit. Next. Next one. Nope. Wrong one. I want this one next. Okay. So he says in the next one, um, the state when I tried both times to do it the legal way, the right way, so we could save that precious little girl and give her, uh, this is about Bella Bond. Joey was going nuts waiting for DCF to get back to us because she was going to be so worried about her being with Rachel. But I told him that we should be patient and let DCF handle it. That's smart. And let them see that we were better off raising her. I was going to adopt her. I was already married to Joey at the time. So she was legally my stepdaughter already. I don't think so. I don't think so. Joey listened to my advice and agreed. We never should have waited. I should have known better than they didn't help me with Caitlin, but never in my wildest dreams that I think those monsters would do that. What they did. Why would you not think that in your wildest dreams? She's a crackhead, a literal crackhead. Bella Bond's mother is on like, you can't understand a word she's saying. She's a crackhead. And you allow this child near her. Good job. Well, that was well thought out. I never met the whore, but I had just a gut feeling that she was not fit to be a mother. Oh, geez, a gut feeling. What gave that away? I wonder. Next one. Hold on. All right, next one. Here we go. Share screen. And that. all right, here we go. So this one says uh Joey was paying Joey was paying her child support, which she neglect. I don't believe that for a second. Joey Amoroso is paying child support. If he's paying child support, then why is he robbing Home Depot? Yeah. Junkies don't pay child support. That's not a thing. You also have to get like court ordered child support. I highly doubt. 
that there was any sort of documentation with the court involving like paternity or anything like that because the guy was not involved in her life at all. She's probably spent it on drugs, the junkie whore that she is. Okay, so I'm not interested in slamming Rachel Bond. We all know that Rachel Bond is a horrible person. Fuck her and fuck the guy that killed Bella Bond. We all know that. Like, nobody disagrees with that. Uh, that's not a hot take. I don't just, like, if you read my blogs, I'm never just like, people send me blog ideas sometimes about, you know, a murder or a rape or something like that. And they'll say, Terrible, you should write about this. You should, you should roast this guy. I'm like, what am I going to say? Yeah, rape, he's, that guy sucks. Fuck that guy. That's not interesting. You guys come to me because you want interesting takes. You want, we all agree in universal takes that like that guy's, those are bad people. But I go after the people that like the Boston Globe is promoting Joe Amoroso. And I have a problem with that because that guy was not there for his kids. So I'm going to take that angle. That's what I do. Okay. So anyway. Now, why do you know that? Because the things that you say about Joey are not true. As soon as I saw this, so we're like on our third screenshot here. And <laughs> that's funny. Methadone miles on Google maps. Uh, we're on our third screenshot here and she has not mentioned talking about Janetti. Like this is all about Joey and Moroso. Like I don't give a shit about him. We're not here to talk about him. You know, they're not true. Joey was not Debbie. Yes, he was. He's the definition of it. Should we have been there in Boston? Yes, we should have been. Case closed. But we did move home. We were a month too late. One fucking month. No, you were not one month too late. You were three years too late. The girl was turning three. You had three fucking years to get to her. Well, we're just here a month too late. We just missed her. Oh, she's dead. Oops. Just in the nick of time. So when I'm reading this, I'm like, fuck this bitch. I'm like, I'm like reading this and I'm thinking, I'm like, do I play along with this woman? Because I really want to get her on the show. We'll, we'll see what happens. In your defense, I would say what he is assuming to be true is what looks like from the outside and the stories the junkie or was telling people made it worse. So when, when, when people don't know the truth, they form their own conclusions. I get it, but I'm telling you what really happened. And we tried doing it the right way. I will not stick up for Joey for ending up all over the news, doing all the stupid shit he was getting caught for. But I will ask you this. Can you honestly sit there? And say that the same thing happened to you. If the same thing happened to you, then that you would have been calm and perfect with the cameras, thinking how the world was going to judge you if you broke down. Uh, if this did happen to me, I would not show my face. I would be ashamed and embarrassed that I missed out on my daughter's life and I would not start showing up and having to go fund me as soon as the cameras start rolling. No. Joey lost it. He went bananas. Hot, and the, unfortunately, the entire world was watching. But at that point in time, he did not care what anyone thought of him. I'm not asking you to become BFFs with Joey. I'm asking you to just stop talking bad about him and accusing him of not being there for Bella because he was. No, he was not. He was not. And I will continue to. I'm not going to say nice things about Joey Amoroso. Not happening. I'm not going to say anything about him. Like, I'm done with Joey Amoroso. Why are you bringing up Joey Amoroso? He's got nothing to do with this. This is about Mike Gennetti. We're here to talk about Mike, and you want to talk about Joe. Not happening. Should he have been there sooner? Yes, we both should have. Well, not you, just him. Um, and if I ever thought she was in danger like that, I would have gotten her myself, because if you ask me, I am just as much to blame, because I was and am one of her parents. No, you're not. There's nothing you could say or do that Joey, that he doesn't do to himself due to the guilt he carries inside. Does he do dumb shit? Yes. But that doesn't make a deadbeat or a murderer. No, not a murder, just a, a deadbeat. And it doesn't make him human. It's not normal. It's not relatable. Stop pretending that it is, okay? The, the fact that you seem to think this is some sort of relatable thing tells me everything that I need to know about you, dear, okay? So, Let's go to the next one. Thank you very much, Rich says. Uh, I have having a long day at work. Thank you. Appreciate that. Glad to help. Working people at Turtle Boy. Uh, so this is what they write. Um, so I'm like, I thought you wanted to expose Mike. It sounds like you want to come on here and fix Joe's reputation. That's not happening. And I'm like, do you have any evidence that he paid child support? 
you want to redeem his reputation. Let's do you have any evidence? You claim you want to expose bad people for who and what they really are. And I respect that, which is why I'm even talking to you right now. However, I just gave you the truth about Joey and you could care less about the truth when it comes down. What evidence have you shown me of any of this? Oh, so I just told you the truth about Joey paid child support. I'm like, oh, why didn't you just say so? I didn't know that. Oh, I got them all wrong. I, I misunderstood. Duh, I'm glad I talked to you. Thank you for clearing that up. That doesn't make sense to me. And I wasn't going to talk about Joey on your show. I know full well what it is about, which is why I'm discussing with you at all. What I am doing right now. Thank you very much, dude. What I am doing right now um, is trying to clear the air between you and Joey. So there isn't any animosity between the two of you. No, we'll never the 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 air will never be clear between Joey and I. I will always hate him for who he is. I think he's a piece of shit. There is no ratchet redemption with him. He's an asshole. Fuck him. Especially if you're not even sorry. Like if you're not even admitting that you did something wrong. Um. Okay. Next. Well, I'm like I'm not here to talk about him. Just Mike. Well, if you want me to get involved with you in your show. Joey will be with me. He is my husband, Caitlin's stepfather, and the baby's grandfather. The baby's grandfather? I don't think you understand how uh, genealogy works. I'm pretty sure the grandfather would be whoever conceived, whoever Schmoker is. Schmoker would be the grandfather. Not you. Not Joe. Joe would show up and pretend to be the grandfather and try to capitalize it, but he's not. Um, and again, I was, I, I wasn't intending to be hostile towards Joey Amoroso. He has nothing to do with any of this. Why does he need to be on there? You're a grown ass woman. <laughs> You're a grown ass woman. Why do you need Joey Amoroso on there with you? Please explain next. So this goes on. Let's see. That is not cool. Okay. Okay. This is the one I was like, okay. Um, I go, I put them down plenty. The girl was almost three. Fuck out of here. Look, I go, look, I hate your husband. I'll never ever respect him, but I'm not here to relive that. I'm, uh, I'm here to expose Mike. If you want to do that, this is your chance. If you want to cover for him, because of Joe, then go right ahead. And that's essentially what's happening here. I'm like, by not coming on the show, like you you claim you want to help Caitlin out, right? You want to expose this guy. So I have the platform to do it. So you should come on here and discuss it, right? If you if, Because there will be another girl after Caitlin. And the more that's out there on Mike that they can find, the better. If you're not coming on the show because I won't get along with Joe, then you're looking to protect him. You care more about Joe than you do about your daughter, which is accurate. You do care more about him than your daughter. You chose Dick over him. You pulled the Kate Peter. Okay. And I'm like, I'm like, she goes evidence. I watch him Western union to her every week. Oh, there's the evidence guys. The crackhead who dated Mike Gennetti wants us to take her at her word that she saw her other crackhead boyfriend. Western Union, the money to the third crackhead racial bond. This is all, we'll just take her word for it, guys. She's trustworthy. People who fuck Mike Gennetti can be trusted. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't need to prove anything to you or anyone else. And like I said, I'm not here to fight. Like, are you kidding me? And she's like, you really had no right to judge him. He was a grieving father for Christ's sake. No, I did. His daughter was murdered. Yeah, he acted dumb. Anyway, yeah. What else we got from her? Anything? So I'm like, I go, he was arrested twice in the months after she was identified. He went on to say that I'm Baby Doe's dad. Now you can tell everybody you arrested Bella's father. <laughs> what kind of asshole says something like that? I'm like, he's paying child support and robbing Home Depots. 
Like what? That doesn't make any sense. And she's like, cover for Joey. What does that mean? So we go on. We're almost done. I promise. Okay, where do you see this? Where do you see, I mean, this is when I realized I was dealing with a piece of shit, too. Okay, so this is when I brought up the Home Depot thing, which was in the paper, and he was charged with it, and he pled guilty towards it. This is what she says. He stole something from Home Depot? Do you have proof of that? Where's your evidence? Yeah, it's called an arrest report. Here's a link. <laughs> it's called the Boston Globe. Like, everybody wrote about this. Because he never left the store which was why the charges were dropped. And he had a hypodermic needle on him too, but yeah. And like I said before, yes, Joey fucked up. So the mere fact that she's out here like saying, oh, he didn't rob the Home Depot means that she's a fucking liar too. She's a liar. That's all she is. She's just another piece of shit, junkie liar. And I'm not going to have her on my show kissing her ass because I want to fucking, I have a common thing with her where we're both going to go after Jenny. She's not reliable. I would not bring a real, I would not bring an unreliable witness in front of you people and tell you that she's reliable. We can trust her. You can't. She fucked Mike Gennetti. She cannot, anybody who does it cannot be trusted period. And so she goes, you can hate on Joey all you want. That is your right, but don't sit there and continue to lie about him. Okay. Shut up. I had no reason to lie about any of that. If Joey was a deadbeat and abandoned his daughter, he was, and he did. I wouldn't have been with him. Well, you were. Okay. Um, she goes, I do expect you to take my word on it. I ask you not to disrespect my daughter or my husband, but you can't help yourself. Well, fuck your daughter. And she went to court and like tried to get a fucking order on me. Your daughter can go pound sand. I don't give a shit about your daughter. Um, and quite frankly, she got this way because you're bad at your job, which is raising kids, which you obviously don't do very well. Talk about adopting Bella Bond. Fuck out of here. Why do you want to come on the show? Um, let's see. You're disrespecting me. I haven't done a goddamn thing to you. I tried to have an adult conversation with you. And you're disrespecting my husband. Anyway, this just goes on. You don't hurt me. I'm like, okay, we'll go ahead and do that. Like, right, let's have you on, okay? And then she blocks me. She blocks me. So that that was the end of that. Joe, she, this is this is the best part? She goes, I didn't know we were supposed to be discussing Mike. I told you Joey comes with me, and I thought you two not fighting would have been ideal. Like, why does he need to be here? Why the fuck does this guy need to be here? No, that guy, cause so we can hog the camera again. Fuck out of here. But you just want to be ignorant and talk shit. No, I don't want to talk to him at all. He's not the story. I know he likes to insert himself in everything, but he's not. You're a joke and I feel bad for you. I pity you. Oh, you pity me. You sleep in the same bed as Joe Amoroso and your daughter fucks Mike Gennetti, but you feel bad for me. Interesting. Okay. Joe Amoroso is twice the man you are. <laughs> twice the man. Oh, uh, well, I'll tell you one thing. I saw my daughter before her third birthday. That happened. I didn't like allow crackheads to raise her. That never happened. I didn't pay child support for her because, you know, I lived with her. So I didn't need to do that. I don't use Western Union because I'm also not a crackhead. What kind of crackhead? Who uses Western Union? Have a good night and uh, and good luck taking Mike down. I hope you succeed. So whatever. All right. So that's that. That's that. Some other people were sending me messages. I got to see here. Is there anything else I should see? People are sending me like a million things. Okay. Just now? What happened just now? Okay. That's a lot to read. Okay. This is a new thing. Let me read this. I got a new video here. Is this worth reading, Diane? Only send me the shit that's worth reading. I think that's the video you just sent, right, Diane? 
Okay, let's read this. I trust Diane sent me something good here. Let me pull this up. So let's see what we got. I haven't seen this. Yes, I'm getting one behind the scenes. Okay. So she says, I'm just seeing these messages now. I'm having issues with my car, so I can only take a second to respond. Just to be clear, Turtle Boy did not bring Joey up first. I did. And I will. Ex she's right. I will explain why. I, if I was even going to consider going on, even speaking to him, I needed things to be civil between. Okay, so Blarney's also sending me some. Blarney, I'm going to check you out in a minute. Uh, between him and Joey. Turtle Boy has turned him apart many times. I didn't like it. He has issues which I never denied nor condone, but does not give him the right to judge him. Joey watched his pregnant girlfriend die in a very horrific hit and run accident they were in. Why does this shit always happen to him? Um, in 2008, and then his daughter was murdered. As a result, Joe had a nervous breakdown. He's done a lot of stupid crap, which I'm sure you guys remember because his dirty laundry was aired all over the world. So Turtle Boy does not like Joe because of that. And just a side comment, I didn't know Turtle Boy was so perfect and never made a mistake in life. I love when they say, that. oh, you must be so perfect. No, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I make a lot of mistakes, okay? But there are degrees to, you know, imperfection. There are degrees. Let's not pretend that they're not. Your imperfections are a lot bigger than mine. Like, I, I yeah, I, like, I make mistakes as a dad. We all do. Okay, nobody's perfect. But I didn't leave my kids with crackheads. I didn't I didn't I never did that. Okay. So there there is a huge thing here. And I've absolutely, absolutely have the right to judge you for that. 110 percent Thank you very much. Let's pull these. Let's see. Um I want to address it beforehand, thinking it was the adult thing to do because Joey is a part of whatever of this, whether Turtle Boy likes it or not. No, he's not. No, he's not. This guy is, this woman's still clearly an abused woman. Like, obviously, if she can't do anything on her own without her man being by her side, she's still got that battered woman syndrome thing going on. And I'm sure this guy's abusive, too. No doubt about it. I, I would I would bet good money on that. He's Caitlin's stepfather, and he is the baby's grandfather. I wanted Joey with me because I was going on a TV show. I don't want to do it alone. Why not? There was no way in hell Turtle Boy was going to just be nice to Joey if that happened, so I wanted to discuss it. I have regrettably given Turtle Boy the benefit of the doubt where Joey was concerned. I would tell Joey, you can't blame people for having a negative opinion about you when they see you running around Boston acting like a fool. It was going to jail uh, when Rochelle said you weren't around for Bella. They didn't like it. It had nothing to do with Rochelle saying that. It had to do with the fact that you weren't around for him. You weren't around for him. Okay. Who the fuck does he think he is to say that to me? Joey and I need to send him documents proving everything. Fuck that. I stupidly thought that given the truth, Turtle Boy would think differently about Joey. You didn't show me any truth. Nothing. I was completely wrong. I said, Turtle Boy, you say you want to call people out for... Oh, God, she just talks and cocks. Okay. I don't even want to read her bullshit anymore. Okay. I'm done reading her bullshit. What else we got from Blarney here in the inbox? Blarney says... The DCF video. Okay, let's check that out. Oh, we found Caitlin's dad. I'm not really interested in him. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, we got to see this. Oof. Okay, so this is, um, this is Mike Gennetti's table we're going to look at right now. A video that he posted online. Let's check this out. Share screen. Check this out. So this is ripped from his own page, Facebook page. You have crack residue there. Is a slowed down video. You got scratch tickets. What else is going on here? Anyone else want any crackheads in the house can fill me in about what the what's going on here with this equipment? The baby can reach this? What the fuck? This is creepy. What the fuck is going on? Who made this? Those handcuffs? 
Okie dokie. So that's from his own page. Good. So there's that. Um, what else I got here? Anything else? What's this that was just sent to me? Oh, here's another one. Where do you see this one? See, we made it happen. This was, look at the date. 2011. So this is back when he was still dating the mom. She was born in 1995. She was 15 years old when this picture was taken. He was banging her then. Okay. He goes, blood or not, she is my heart. Her and Joanne are my whole world unconditional love. So this is when he was, you know, rape, statutory rape. I mean, the guy's a fucking monster, obviously. Obviously. Wait, somebody's just saying, go to your YouTube from 7-19-2020, angry caller. It was Janetti before we knew it. Was, you're kidding me. Janetti called into the show before I knew who he was. You're kidding me. Is that real? Is that real? Justice for, Lisa, Justice for Lisa Hainsworth. Absolutely. Courtney gets zero redemption. I agree with that one. Courtney had a chance to be the voice for all the women that uh, Janetti abused, and she couldn't do it because Joe Amoroso's feelings came first. That's ultimately what she did. So Courtney Amoroso is a piece of shit, a horrible mother who raised, who fucked, who introduced a monster into her daughter's life. And now she's like, oh my God, it was the biggest mistake I ever made. Yeah, but you made it. You made it. It's not a normal mistake either. You did it. You fucked up. And then you went with this douchebag. And now you're trying to convince me he's a good guy. Fuck her. Fuck her. Is that real, Megan Floyd? I mean, should I, am I wasting my time going to that? Or should I actually do it? Let me know. In the meantime, why don't we take any questions you guys have? Big audience tonight. Over 300 most of the night. That was nice to see. It, it's him that called you to get a story pulled. Real, so Mike Janetti. So yeah, if, Meg, I'm, I'm going to be mad at you. If I waste time going to this, it's not him. We're not friends anymore. You're saying what day is it? July 20th, 2020? Can we, how about, can we have one of the turtle riders pull it up and send it to me if you guys got it? That'd be easier. Okay. Any other, uh, while they're doing that, why don't we uh, take any questions? Anybody have any questions? Uh, I mean, the Mac thing, I did, I, I got shit on Twitter for this because I'm like, Cat, Cam got cut because of COVID. I'm sorry. Like, Belichick knew this guy sucked. I mean, we all know that Mac is better. Right, we all would rather see Mac play than Cam Newton. Okay, but Belichick did not bench him all last year, and he he was historically bad. Jared Stidham could not have been worse than what Cam Newton was last year. Could not possibly have been worse, and he still stuck with him. And then he brought him back. Why? Why did he do that? To make. Mac better. I mean, that I guess that would make a little bit sense. But the plan was to start Cam Newton. You cannot convince me otherwise. And I think the fact that Cam is not vaccinated and is not hiding it was just all Belichick needed to be like, see ya. I don't need this headache. They will put up with the star player not being vaccinated, but the message has been sent loud and clear now. If you are a marginal NFL player, you better get vaccinated or you're gonna you're not gonna last in the league. If you're a star, if Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers doesn't get vaccinated, they don't have to because he's Tom Brady. You don't have to. But Cam Newton does. Absolutely. Or else Cam Newton's done. Gardner Minshew does. I mean, you name it. Some of these guys, they have, the marginal NFL guys, you know, that are like the 25th, 26th best quarterback, they better get their ass fucking vaccinated. If they want to stay in, okay? And Hoyer is so bad. Hoyer is the worst quarterback I've ever seen. Like he can't, there's no way Jared Stidham can be worse than Hoyer. Hoyer is, remember him against Kansas City last year? Oh, it was painful. He sucks so badly. So we need like a new backup because Hoyer ain't going to cut it. He's just, he sucks. 
He's really bad. Do you think Hoyer got cut? Did I miss that? Okay. So yeah, today was the first day of school, by the way. Uh, today was the first day of school. My daughter did wear a fucking mask today. I mean, what am I going to do? She, She's six. She's too young to rebel. Okay. I would support her if she rebelled. I told her to. I'm like, don't wear your mask. She's like, but I have to. But I have to. So what am I going to say? You know, like she wants the kids to go to school. I wouldn't do it. And that's my big thing with the kids. Was like, what happened to rebellion? When did kids become such pussies? I didn't hear any stories today about like high school kids being like, fuck you, cunt. Remember I was reading, I did Turtle Club the other day. I read some of the reviews of, you know, the write-ups I had of students. You know, I'm just like, these kids are like, telling me to fuck off. Like, where's that spirit? With coronavirus, with something that actually matters. Like, tell you to tell them to fuck off. Don't wear the mask. Rebel, kids. People will actually support you. Don't break break the rules. Don't listen to the rules. Do whatever you want. So I guess Meg just sent me the link. Let me play this. This was really Janetti. Why don't I put what out there? Why don't, so you're telling me that you've done nothing wrong in your life. You this is not Janetti. Nothing wrong. Yeah, I might have done some things wrong. So why don't you put it out there on your... That's not Janetti. I know who that was. That's not Janetti. Um, anyway. Anything else, guys? Yeah, that's definitely not him. I mean, it's like, like they tell you, like high school kids, what is, what's wrong with you? The teachers tell you not to have keg parties, right? Do you listen to them? Oh, we can't have a keg party this weekend. Oh, the teacher said we can't. What's wrong with you? What are you afraid of? Oh no, I might get in trouble. Who cares? This is actually a time when it's like people will actually support you for that, you know? Yeah, Turtle Club is tomorrow night. Correct. We're going to do some more history. We're going to talk about Afghanistan and the start of World War I tomorrow. We're going to talk about that and how it relates to this. So turn into a little, we're doing a little history tomorrow night. Anything else? Can you drop the Genetti? <laughs> I know. You'll run out of lead, my man. You will run out of lead. Oh, who's Joanne? Is that Joanne from Westminster? You know about the res. That was our spot. That was our spot. We had our 20, uh, 20 year high school anniversary the other day. It was the class of 2000 and 2001 we had it, but uh, we were talking about the res the other day. It's funny. If you saw us, our group, you would think we were like the whitest high school ever. <laughs> we had one black kid there. Even though we were like the most diverse high school like in America, like white people were a minority. It's kind of weird. All right. Anything else? What did I say? I meant to say reunion. What did I say? Yeah, ESPN getting duped on that high school game was pretty funny. I don't want to get into it right now. I don't want to start over. It's been a long show. Anyway, I'm going to call it a night, guys. It's been a long show. But uh, thank you all for the support. Thanks for the donos. I appreciate it, guys. And we will uh, look at Blarney the saying, we can't go all night. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. 
we're going to stop now. All right. So we're going to call it a night, guys, and we will see you guys all for the next episode of Turtle Boy Live on Thursday night. I'll see some of you tomorrow night for Turtle Club. Peace, Turtle Riders. <laughs>